All right, well, welcome back everyone. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and uh, as you probably already realized by now, when I first created the Swift UI Bootcamp, uh, we were on iOS 14. And since then, a couple months ago now, Apple released iOS 15, and in iOS 15 is a bunch of really cool new features for Swift UI. So these features are definitely worth going over, and because of that, I am now circling back, and I'm gonna add some videos to each of these Bootcamp playlists uh, to cover the new features in iOS 15. So this will be the first video of a bunch of videos that are gonna cover iOS 15 features. And in this video, we're gonna look at async image. This is probably uh, the most popular new feature that came from iOS 15 in Swift UI uh, and is popular for a reason because it allows us to actually download images from a URL from the internet with literally one line of code. And when we get that image, we can then resize it, we can shape it however we want. Uh, but it's literally one line of code that can do all of this work for us. So it's a super powerful feature. I'm gonna use it in every app going forward and it's definitely worth a review. So with that said, let's jump into Xcode and take a look. All right, welcome back everyone. I am in our project here, the Swiftful Thinking Bootcamp, the original playlist that I'm coming back to to make some updates for iOS 15. Uh, so let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It will be a Swift UI view, and let's call this one Async Image Bootcamp. Let's click Create. I'm just going to move it down here below my onboarding stuff. Let's get the canvas connected here, and let's write some code. This is going to be a fun, easy video because this is a really simple feature that is awesome that Apple has added in iOS 15. Let's get started with a very simple async image. Open the parentheses. We're gonna keep it simple with just the URL completion here. And of course, we need an optional URL to put in here. So up in our file, let's create a URL. We'll say let URL equals URL. We will open the parentheses. Let's type in string, and then we can put in our URL here. I don't have one yet, so I'll just leave it as a blank string, and we'll pass in the URL. And obviously we're getting the error here that async image is only available for iOS 15, which of course we know already. Um, I could click fix here and we could start adding these fallbacks to all these files, but we're going to do a bunch of iOS 15 videos coming up here. And I don't want to have to just write this sloppy code all the time. So I'm just going to go to the navigator here, click on the project, and let's just change our minimum deployment from 14 to iOS 15. I don't recommend doing this on production apps just yet. You should probably still support iOS 14 if it's an existing app in the App Store, but let's move that to iOS 15, get our error to go away. And the whole purpose here of async image is that we can asynchronously download an image from a URL. And that's basically getting an image from the internet into our device. Without async image, there's actually a lot of code that we had to write in order to get this to happen. So this is a really handy feature, especially if you're just starting out and you don't want to deal with all of the image downloading stuff. So async image, and we can see here that the image has, I guess, this gray background before there is actually an image in it. So we don't see anything but except this gray background, which is the container. And that's because our URL doesn't have an image. So I'm going to go to the internet here. And I'm on this website, pixum.photos. Uh, I just Googled free image API. There are plenty of them. And I'm just going to take um, this API here where it's pixum.photos backslash 200. Let's go back into our Xcode and let's paste in the image URL. So right now we don't see anything because this async image, when this view appears, is going to run some tasks that will then download the data from that URL, convert that data into an image, and then put it inside this container. So right now we don't see anything, but when we press play, we should get that download to start, and we'll see the image pop up here. This image API changes every time, so every time we reload this and fetch more data, we should see a new image, which is pretty cool. And when we use this first just async image with no other parameters here, the image is going to be the size of the actual image. So here we're downloading an image at 200 pixels, which is why we can see it. If we download an image at 400 pixels, we should see a bigger image. So this will change based on the size of the actual image you're downloading. Now, of course, we want to convert these images 
into a size that we can actually put into our app. Because now that we get this image, chances are we're gonna to wanna to modify it a little bit to put it maybe in a specific location on the screen. So what we would try to do is do something like a frame and maybe we could try to make it, let's make it 100 by 100 so it's a smaller image. And if I run this again, you're gonna see that the image is still 400 pixels even though we added the frame. So if I stop the preview here and I click on the frame, we can see that it updated to 100 by 100 but the image when it downloads is still bigger. So of course this is a problem. And the solution is actually to use a different initializer for this async image. So if we open this up here, and instead we use the, and instead of using this first one, we're gonna use the one with URL content and placeholder. And in this one, I'm looking for where the content is an image. So I'll press enter on that, and we'll pass in our URL again. On the content, I'll press enter, and this will be the returned image and we'll add some code here in a second. And then this will be the placeholder. So before, when we had no image, we saw that gray box. That was the default placeholder. But now we can add our own custom placeholders. So the most common use case for this is probably just a progress view. So I'll open and close the parentheses here. So if I stop the preview here, we can see the little progress view coming in. It's just that little loading indicator you guys have probably seen many times. And when it does download, we're going to get this returned image. And then we want to put this returned image onto the screen, just like that. Now, if I hold the option button and click on this returned image, we can see that it is of type image. This is the same type that when we add regular images in Swift UI, they are just images. And if you've been following this playlist way back when, we did an image bootcamp. And when we added plain images to the screen, we have just a Google image here. We made them resizable, we could change their rendering mode, their aspect ratio, we can make them scale to fit or scale to fill, and we can do some other cool clip shape stuff. And the image we're getting back in this closure is exactly one of these, it's just an image. So we can do all of these modifiers basically on the image in this closure. So we get this returned image, let's make it resizable, and let's give it the frame that we want and we should probably make it scaled to fit. Let's click play on the live preview and now we can get our image, even though it's downloading at 400 pixels, we are resizing it on the screen to fit exactly the size that we need, which is pretty perfect to be honest. We could add some, maybe some corners, make it look exactly how we want. So this is so cool because we literally are downloading an image in a split second, putting it on the screen. There's so much code that you would need to write in order to do this if we didn't have async image. So this is so incredibly handy. Uh, I highly recommend using this if you are just beginning, you don't wanna deal with image downloading and, and caching and all of that. I should note while we're here that this async image is actually caching the images. It's using the default URL session cache when it is downloading. So we don't have to deal or worry about any of that. Um, obviously in more advanced apps, you might wanna make your own cache, but that is a lot of work, uh, probably for a very small incremental benefit for the majority of apps. So this is uh, just super handy, highly recommend using this. Before we wrap up this video, let's do one more completion, which is I think really cool. So let's type in async image and open the parentheses and we're gonna use the one with URL and content. And we're looking for the one with an async image phase as the content. So not an image this time, but an async image phase is where we're gonna get back. So I'll click enter on that. This will be the URL, and then this will be the async image phase. So press enter on that. I'll call this uh, phase. And then in here, just for a second, because we have this error, I'm just gonna put some text that says hi. If I hold the option button and click on this phase, we can see that it's an async image phase. And I'm gonna click on that and go to the documentation real quick. I just wanna show you guys that this phase um, has an empty state, it has a success state, and in the success state, we'll get that image back again. And then it also has a failure state. So if we try to download it and it fails, then we can get an error. So we're gonna take all of these states here and then put them into our app. So I'm gonna go back to my code now. I'll put the little comment up here. So let's deal with those. Let's do a switch. And we're gonna switch on the phase. And the first case we have right here is case.empty. 
Um, and if it's empty, empty is basically the image is not yet loaded. That's the same thing as our placeholder. So let's just put our progress view on the screen. Let's do our case success. And when we get the success, we should get a let image back. The completion should be doing some of this for us, but it's not working right now. I think it's an Xcode 13 thing. So I'm just typing this out, but now we're gonna get that image back if it's successful. And then we wanna do everything again to our image. So I'm gonna just copy this, paste it here. I'm gonna highlight these rows. Let's command and forward slash to uncomment them. Let's control and I to fix the formatting. And we have one more case failure. And if we get the failure, we should get an let error. And if there's an error, let's we could put the error on the screen if we want to, but uh, better than that, let's just put in another image in case we can't actually get one. So let's put an image with maybe a system name of question mark. Let's make it font of headline. We're not gonna actually get that, but if we can't download an image, we'll just put a question mark on the screen. Um, let's click resume one more time. Sorry, this should be returned image. We're getting a quick warning here that um, the switch covers all known cases, but they may, but async image may have additional unknown cases. This is uh, super annoying. I don't really know what these unknown cases even would be. Apparently they don't either, or they would have made a case for it. Uh, so what we can just do is add another default. So if it's not empty success or failure, then we have whatever is in here. So I'm just gonna take our question mark and just put it as the default case as well. Let's play one more time and we get our image back. So uh, same thing as we did before. So this async image is the same thing pretty much as down here. A little more code because we could customize like the failure case pretty much, which is pretty realistic, something you probably want to do in your apps. All right, guys, that's my video on async image. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and I'll see you in the next video.